everyone, this is Derek from Badgerland Birding. Today we're here with Donald from Vortex. We're going to talk about the basics of a scope and, as a beginner, how to choose the right scope for you. So we have a spotting scope set up here. In the bird world, you'll normally use spotting scopes when you're looking at things that are very far away, such as shorebirds or big flocks of geese or ducks. It would be really nice to have one of these. I've kind of gotten away for a while with using my camera on a tripod, but the scopes do give you a little more clarity and normally a little extra distance, so it's an important piece uh, to have if you're a serious birder. So we have one of the Vortex scopes here. Donald, can you tell us a little bit about like, just as a beginner, what are the different parts of the scope and uh, how do they all work? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Derek. Um, well, first of all, there are a few different key components of a spotting scope that every spotting scope is gonna have. One is the focus wheel. Obviously, that's how you focus based on how far away you are from the objective. Um, next is going to be the magnification. Most spotting scopes are a variable magnification product, um, so you can adjust it. Like for this one, for instance, it goes from 20 at the very minimum all the way up to 60 times magnification at the maximum. All spotting scopes, as with all optics, are going to have an eyepiece with hopefully something to adjust the eye relief here. The eye relief just being the distance between the um, lens and your pupil. And the last key component is going to be the objective lens, uh, which is going to be the lens facing the objective. That's how I remember it, <laughs> at least. Uh, and do these have a sun, sun shield? Yeah, too, they right? do. Not all spotting scopes have a sunshade. These do, though. Spotting scopes should also, of course, come with some lens caps just to keep the lenses safe. Uh, yeah, awesome. those are the most important pieces. So this pretty much just helps with like reducing glare, right? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. cool. Like in this instance, we probably will throw it out there all the way and just leave it there. Cool, sounds good. Um, so some important things to think about when you're buying a scope is that it's full HD glass. And so what that means is that that glass is gonna be coated in a certain way that it reduces color fringing. So on some lower end scopes, you'll see like almost like a hue around the object you're looking at. All optics probably going to have like a little bit, but if that's full HD, it's going to reduce that color fringing. Additionally, you want it to be um, multi-coated glass as well. That's going to allow as much light as possible to come in um, so that your field of vision is as clear as possible. Also having a good prism in here. All optics have prisms. If you were just looking through without a prism, that would be an inverted image. That prism bends the light and allows you to see in the correct way. Additionally, spotting scopes are going to be angled or straight. All the ones we have out here are angled, but you can also opt for the straight version as well. I think the angled is a little easier to see. You don't have to have it up as high in your tripod and then maybe the wind blows, it falls over. So we have all of the angled versions today, but you can also get the straight ones as well. Angled versions are also a good option if you're with a group because then it's much easier for people to just lean over like this instead of hunching over like this if they're looking through a straight scope. Uh, some issues that people have with angled scopes though is that it's kind of hard to train your brain that you are looking down but actually looking straight ahead. It just takes muscle memory, it's something that you have to practice with. Um, like for me, I would just look at the top of a tree and say I'm going to look up there and then immediately try to get it up there as soon as possible. And you know, it's just practice, muscle memory. Awesome. So we have. This is one of the uh, more affordable Vortex scopes we have here. Which one is this? This is our Diamondback HD. And this is around five to $600 um, for the full-sized 20 to 60 by 85. 20 to 60 is the magnification. 85 is the diameter of the objective lens in millimeters. And again, the objective lens being this lens facing away from you. So if this was higher than 85, this would just be bigger, right? Yeah, okay. that's really all it means. It would be bigger. Objective lens size um, does a lot of different things. Uh, the main thing is that it offers a wider field of view and more light uh, when it is bigger. If it's smaller, less light, narrower field of view. But the optic is usually a lot less heavy if there is a smaller objective lens. Yeah, and you, so you mentioned this one was like around the $600 range. Yeah. Um, some people might be like, wow, that's really expensive. But with Vortex, they have lifetime warranty. Yes. So if something does happen, you can send it in to get repaired. Uh, Ryan and I actually just did a tour here, so we got to see um, all the stuff inside. Really cool company, and they have great turnaround time for sending stuff in. So if you do have an issue, 
Like you're thinking that's kind of expensive, but you're looking at a lifetime product here. So it's, it's a good investment if mm -hmm. you're investing in a good product. That's how I always say it. It's a lifetime investment. You know, uh, with optics, the goal is really to just buy one and then make that last you the rest of your life. Um, we are happy to have such a no strings attached warranty where you, you know you don't even need a receipt you don't need proof of purchase as long as you have something with our name on it and send it in we will repair it for you or replace it so really proud to be a part of that cool um so we got this one and then we're going to move down the line to more expensive as we go through our scope line up here here's our next model we have which one is this this is our viper hd model uh this one you can find for around $900 all the way up to $1,350. Uh, the main difference between these two models is uh, this has much denser glass, uh, which with all optics, the denser the glass, obviously the optic is gonna be slightly heavier, but the light is transmissed through the glass much more purely, so you lose less light transmission. Um, the color is also a little bit more pure. Uh, the biggest difference with the Viper though is that we use this technology called extra low dispersion glass, which uh, helps the color fringing that you were mm -hmm. mentioning earlier, um, otherwise known as chromatic aberration, and it really tightens up that color and gives you a more authentic color of what you are viewing. Neat. So this is the 85 and we also have the 65, which is a little bit smaller here. Yep. So our, uh, all of our spotting scopes, our three models, come in a smaller version as well. Um, the bigger models are 20 to 60 by 85. So again, 20 to 60 magnification, 85 millimeter objective lens. All of them also come in a 15 to 45 by 65 version. So uh, really the only difference is the size. Again, with a smaller objective lens, you get a slightly narrower field of view and less light. Uh, but it is also a lot more compact. It's less heavy, better for traveling. Is there a price difference between this one? And yes, the price difference is uh, for this one specifically, uh, the 65 millimeter version comes in at about 700 to $1,000. Um, but again, you're sacrificing some light field of view. Uh, I usually say when you are getting a spotting scope, if it's something that you plan on just setting up and leaving there to monitor or observe, it's usually better to just get the bigger one because the extra light and wider field of view will really, really come in handy and it's much more noticeable when you remove that. Something like this is probably a little more portable though? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you need something that you're taking on a trip or throw in a suitcase to go on a flight, something like this would probably be the better option. Cool, so we got this version, now we'll move down to our more expensive version. So what's this one we have here? Our last option here for full size is our Razer HD. This is our best uh, in our entire lineup. Um, biggest difference with the Razer is that we use a new technology. With each of our models, we add a new technology that inc improves the value. Uh, with this one, it is a technology called apochromatic triplet lens. Um, again, it just really tightens up the color fringing. Uh, this one also has some of the best edge-to-edge -edge clarity of any spotting scope on the market, especially on ours, it has the best, uh, which just basically means that when you are actually viewing through the optic, every single piece of that image is perfectly clear, whereas in most lower end or just less expensive optics, there's some slight blurring or fringing on the outside of the image. So this is your most expensive model out yeah. of these, but also should be, the main thing is the clarity. It's gonna yes. be the clearest. Yeah. Um, is this have a bigger size out here? Is this, this the same is as the This is the 85 ones? millimeter. So this one actually, due to the way that the um, lens is, the thickness of the lens, this one is actually a 27 to 60 by 85 so the lowest magnification for this is 27 magnification um, yeah cool yeah. so we do have an even smaller yes. one too right and then this one actually came out just about two weeks ago so this is our compact razor this is made for people who hike a lot backpack a lot um, 
people who don't want to put a full-size scope in their suitcase. So this is a 13 to 39 by 56. So significantly smaller than any of the other options. This spotting scope itself is actually under two pounds. Um, and actually paired with a carbon fiber tripod like this, this entire setup is about four and a half pounds in total. So again, great for people who do a lot of hiking, backpacking, people who have to go three miles to get to their destination. Um, so even though it's small, it's pretty, you know, mighty as yes, far as what it can do, absolutely. and really lightweight. So if you're you are someone who doesn't want to handle a ton of ton of weight, this is a really right. nice option. Do you have to worry about it almost blowing over more being so? Yeah. Light? So that is an issue with the lighter um, scopes and tripods. The best way to counteract that is actually if you have a backpack or something. Most tripods have a hook down here. You just set your backpack on there, and it will keep the entire thing nice and stable. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we have Corey the Ketzel that Ryan set up out here in uh, in the field. Donald, how far away do you think that maybe that is about? We'll say four or five hundred feet. Yeah, yeah, maybe four yeah. or five hundred feet. Yeah, uh, ways out there. So we'll get some views through the scope so you can kind of see the differences. Um, we brought some adapters. The view through the adapter and the phone is never as clear as you actually get in real life. But we're going to do our best to compare and uh, we'll kind of go through each scope and show you some views with each one. I'm going to take a look through the Diamondback first. This is the most affordable option that they have in terms of the scopes here. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to start with the zoomed out and then look at the clarity and then zoom in again and see how quickly we can actually zoom in on Corey, our target. So initially, it definitely looks extremely clear. I can see that there's a lot of heat shimmer out there just because we're looking out over an open field. It's really sunny out today and pretty warm, so we're getting some heat shimmer, but that's gonna happen regardless of what kind of optics you use. So let's zoom in on this now and see how quickly I can focus it. Very quickly. So that image of Corey is very clear. If it was an actual Quetzal, I could definitely point that out, put it on eBird that it's a Quetzal, very good view of it. Yeah, that's very quality. It's probably one of the nicest scopes I've looked through actually, so that's a good one for the price especially. We're moving on now, we're gonna go to the Viper. So let's take a look at that one. And I do have to say immediately, that one's already clearer actually when zoomed out all the way. So I do get a little more clarity with that. Let's zoom in on it. And then let's see if we can focus quickly. Super quick on the focus again. Now with it zoomed in, it is a little bit dimmer, but it is not much. So you can still see the color very clear. You can see the red on the chest. You can see the olive green color. I do have a random branch in the way, but that has nothing to do with the optic. User error. <laughs> User error, yeah. But that's also a good view. And I do feel like when you get up the line, uh, the price points, you do get a better quality item so that checks out let's you know. take, a, take a look through the 65 real quick oh, yeah. that one's just a little less magnified 65 looks great honestly uh. like especially when you zoom out on it that color you can see every color that's out there it's really good so let's zoom in on that one nope nope there we go that one was so easy to focus on too that was just like it could be because i'm just improving i gained the focus <laughs> but that was like boom we're there yeah, that one looks very nice too. And the only difference is that this one has less magnification, so it just will not magnify quite as much. But it's a little more compact, so you could carry it with you, in theory, a little bit easier than the slightly larger. It's also got a narrower field of view, so that's one of the differences as well between these two, but technically similar to same model. And now we're getting to the big, the big bad one, the Razor. So this is the highest priced one, but also the best quality that you get. So let's take a look at this and see what it looks like focus it. I would say the color and the clarity are definitely better on this one. There's a lot of bright color coming off of the object, which is Corey. And this one we were actually testing too. You can see way in the distance. So there's stuff that you can see out there that I can basically not see with the naked eye. Uh, let's zoom in on this one. Very quick on the zoom. 
that the brightness is better on this one. So when you zoom in all the way, you still keep more of the brightness than the other ones. The other ones were great too, just a little more dim. This one stays clear the whole way, so yeah. And then we're gonna get to one that has been my favorite actually so far, the Compact. And uh, this thing is so light that you can definitely carry it with you. And for people that are very active, especially people that are going birding, you know, hiking around, this thing is a lot nicer than a big heavy scope. And what was crazy to me is when I look in it, I'll zoom it out all the way. The clarity when zoomed out is insane. Like it's so clear when zoomed out. Like I can see every detail of that plush bird. I can see all the different colored flowers. And then if you zoom in, because it's not gonna have a crazy zoom. It has a great zoom, but it's not gonna like lose a lot because of it. It still looks so good. And just for how small and compact it is, that's an insane amount of magnification and clarity that you get. So, Donald, that's newer glass, right? Yeah. So that's why it's clear? Yeah, it's actually our razor glass. So it's the same exact glass quality as the one that you were just looking at last. Um, again, the biggest difference is that since it is compact, it's only 13 to 39 magnification, which is also one of the reasons that it does look so good is that instead of looking at it at 60 times magnification with the previous one, your max is 39 magnification and things always look better with slightly less powerful magnification as far as resolution and light goes. But this is my first time trying this one out too. It only came out about 10 days ago and I'm blown away with it. I love it. It's already gonna be my favorite scope that I take everywhere. After looking through each of the scopes, I used my phone to get a digiscoped image through each of the optics and then compiled them together to compare them at the highest magnification. Overall, you can see the differences in magnification and notice some variations in edge-to-edge -edge clarity, brightness, and color, but with the heat shimmer of the field, the variability in trying to line up the phone, and processing the image digitally, the changes aren't as noticeable as what we actually saw when looking through the scopes. This emphasizes the importance of testing optics out in person if you can. Nevertheless, it was fascinating to see the images side by side. We hope you found this video useful and that it helped you learn a little more about scopes. Do you have a favorite one? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in purchasing a Vortex product, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank <music> you.